Hey, this is part three of my sports cars discussion with sports car once again. So we did a collaboration video and this is part three and you're probably going to see either four or five more parts um, that are going to be released every single day. So please watch and enjoy. Fanatics takes over a lot of things. What's their approach going to be exactly? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how are they going to do things? Because, you know, I, I, I think at the heart of everything is, is the collector's portion. I mean, that's like the, the beating the beating heart that, that keeps the whole kind of, the, the keeps the whole thing going. Um, but but the other elements, you know, the, the investing and, and, and flipping cards and stuff, those are all parts of a, of a healthy ecosystem, I feel, you know, because if you only have collectors, then the cards go into somebody's hands and they stay there. There's, there's not a lot of movement, you know, in, in uh, except for, you know, if they have two two cards of that card they were seeking or something like that. There's not enough movement. The, fl you know, the flippers kind of create the ongoing the ongoing like micro transactions, the little things, you know, ongoing that keep, that keep going on. And then the, the investors, you know, have, have the cards, they might hold a little bit longer, but it, those do eventually go back on the market. So it seems like you, you need, you need all of that in a, in a healthy, in a healthy ecosystem or else it gets stagnant, you know? So, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I, I don't know what, you know, I, I sometimes worry a little bit that, 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 that fanatics might approach it too much with too much of a focus on like the flippers mentality. I mean, just looking at, at how Josh Luber thinks about things and talks through things, it, you can tell there's a flippers, a flippers mindset in the way he thinks about things. Uh, he, he tries to, he tries to edge towards, you know, collectors and, and investors a bit more, but it, it seems like the default position is a flippers mentality. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I kind of suspect that that there's going to be more more focus in that area, but I don't know if that's the if that's the area that you know th that's that's really because in my mind, you know, I like all three. <laughs> you know, I like engaging in, in as a as a flipper, as a collector, as an investor, depending on the card, depending on the context, depending on the the the, mac the macroeconomic situation. You know, some things I'm thinking short term, some things medium term, th some things long term, some things I just want to hold for myself. You know, I. I I personally like it in like kind of like the holistic way. And I feel it's a, it's, it, you know, it, it needs to, you know, for the hobby to continue to develop, I, I'm hoping it's nurtured in, in all of those ways so that all of those ways have space so that everybody has a, as a way to engage in a, in a nice way, you know, cause flipping like flipping cards doesn't always have to be about 20 xing your money or something like that. Mm -hmm. It can be about the enjoyment process of like, you know, uh, even if you just, you know, make a tiny little bit, you know, even if you, you buy a car for a dollar that you thought about and you sell it for a dollar 50, it can be fun. You know, it, mm -hmm. even if it's like this, these little 50 cent gains here and there, it's, it's still in, it can be an enjoyable process. And so if, if all of that is just part of the ecosystem of, of cards, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, the healthy, the healthy place to be. So I don't know, I don't know, you know, where, where things are going, but that's what I, I hope. I, was, space I, for all I, of these I, things. Yeah. Um, I, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, but um, I think overall the market will be pretty strong um, long-term. I don't know exactly how things are going to go in the next. I think a lot of people think the market is just going to turn around in the next couple of years. Um, I don't see much evidence that that's going to happen. Um, that's another weird narrative that people are going with. Um, and maybe that's just because the most popular people that they listen to are saying this. And that's, that's the best case scenario. Um, but I, I think with the, the lot of money with Fanatics, um, BlackRock, which is a big investment firm, they bought CSG, I believe, right, or, or and CGC. I believe, I, I believe, yeah, CCG, I believe so. Yeah. Um, so with that kind of money pouring in, um, they're gonna do more to make sure it's a more of a mainstream thing. Um, but I think with fanatics, I think what a lot of people need to understand is um, a lot of people, even if they have it at all, the games and stuff, most people don't want to spend a thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand dollars, or even have that kind of money to spend on a card. And most people, even if they're coming, especially when you're just coming in, that's not people's mindset. Um, and even if they think it's kind of an investment to make money, I, I don't see them doing that. 
Um, and then I think it's the other thing is that whole exponential. I think people think linearly. Um, and when things go up exponentially, I think it kind of really messes with people and they get, get all these crazy ideas. Um, I don't think something like this is going to happen again until 30 or 40 years from now when you have more younger people and they didn't learn the lessons that um, is the same thing in, in from 86 to 94. Um, those people learn, most of those people learn the lessons, especially the adults. Um, and they're probably still in the market who are still in the market today, probably didn't get caught up into the whole hype thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of people are going to be like the teenagers or 20 year olds, or maybe, um, just people who are kids, like, so people who are kids now, 30 to 40 years from now, uh, we may see a similar thing where things just go crazy. Um, depending on what's going to go crazy, I don't know. But like a lot of, it could be different sports. Like who knows what's going to be the most popular sport 30, 40 years from now. Um, we'll assume. Some sport that doesn't invent, isn't invented yet. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? It could be uh, video games. Like people. <laughs> The but, e competitions. <laughs> yeah, I, I did see some. I saw some cards of those actually, like the the video game, the competitive video game cards. It's just like these high school age kids sitting in front of a computer. <laughs> it's all like a, this is kind of funny. <laughs> but but I do think um, things are gonna be strong. But I do think one of the issues is um, that whole collectability aspect. I think it's still going to be there. I think it's still going to be the joy and the passion for it, but I think it's going to be a little less. I think it's going to be more of people thinking like, okay, how much is worth? Okay, what, what, what can I sell this for? And when am I planning to sell it? I think it'll be more people who are more calculating who are going to be into the hobby in, in a sense. Um, That's possible. I think it also depends on you know, like the other thing with this with the with the fanatics acquisition is that the connection with the the players associations and things. I think is kind of interesting. You know, like if there's mm -hmm. if there's ways to make the connections between the the card, you know, and 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 the and the players in a more in a deeper way in a more meaningful way. I think it can also, you know, make people like the collectors aspect could bring out it could be brought out in a, in a whole new in a whole new way if it's if it's done well you know i know like you know back in the back in the mid you know early mid 90s everything you know inserts came in and inserts were the big thing but then at some point in the later part of the 90s it was really it was the it was the relics it was the autographs those started to to come in and that changed that changed a lot of things within the hobby you know like because it, it connected it connected the the hobby to the to the players in a, in a way that had never really been seen before and and i think that 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 is a you know it brought out uh, it brought out a certain collector's mentality that that couldn't have really been there before and so I I, I kind of wonder if into the future if there's if there's other ways to connect to players in 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 other meaningful ways I don't know if they're going to try to do something in connection with NFTs or something related to that or but but the fact that there's a connection with the with the players associations you know that fanatics has you know that and it's it's all connected in there it, it seems it seems like there's some possibilities for if there's some creative thinking that can go into what is the new thing like relics and like autographs that became you know really important in the hobby is there a new thing that could be discovered that could be that thing because over the past several years it's been like these just so many different serial numbered cards like the manufactured scarcity like crazy and and just so many of them that it's just ridiculous that's not that's not a that's not something that attracts the collectors you know that's something that 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 attracts a, a flipper's mentality it's something that that you know gives a, a tangible way to see oh this one must be worth this so i can make this much money it like it's 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 not for the collectors though you know when there's when there's 120 different parallels in one set of one player you know like it's it's that's not a collector's thing that's a flipper's thing so if if they can come back to finding ways to connect to the to the to the collector mentality in a deeper deeper sense i think that could i don't know make make things change in a different way like change the trajectory a little bit in certain ways i think that's gonna happen um i, I think that's gonna i think they're gonna have to if they want people like buying their boxes buying their cards um because they don't people are just gonna get fed up and just not buy the product and then if the collectors aren't doing it um, and then investors kind of see the writing on the wall. Um, a lot of these flippers, 
and gamblers, the prices won't even go up. So then it's like, okay, now I'm stuck with this stuff. So then sales are going down. Going <laughs> yeah. I just want to offload it and then it gets real cheap. <laughs> yeah. So, so I do see that happening. I'm not sure what they can do now because you already have the relics and the autographs, you know, maybe NFT blockchain thing. Maybe it gives you utility as well. Um, who knows? Possibly. And if there's, but there, if there's a way for that utility to be more long lasting, because I, you know, they tried like with some of those different sets in the mid '90s, they tried to connect it to like I don't know, like predictor things. You know, if you if this player becomes an MVP, it, it's you know you get some some prize, or you know, or, or if this player scores more than thirty points on this particular date, you get some prize. It connect, it, you know, try to connect into some element of the game, but that was that's such, such a temporary thing. You know, it's like five years later, once that once those dates are all passed, then the connection to that moment doesn't matter that much. So I, you know, like I remember Ziggy was talking at one point about like, um, you know, NFTs and, and how maybe the, the NFT space would be able to open up, you know, like a 10 year ticket to the all-star game or, you know, like, you know, like different things that, that could be there, which is cool, you know, for, and for that 10 year period of time, like that's a really special thing. And it allows you, you know, it could allow you to go, but then on the 11th year, like what makes that what makes that thing valuable anymore? Like you know, it's no longer tangibly connected to something you can do. Why would anybody want that unless it was the person who happened to go to ten years of All Star Games and they want to keep this, you know, as a memento of those of those experiences or something? But you know, so how can you connect it to meaningfully to to the gameplay, but in a way that stays? You know, autos and relics have done that. I don't know if there's something else that we're you know that just hasn't been thought of yet <laughs> i know one thing that may um that kind of has been thought of and it's kind of done um i haven't made a video on this yet but uh bill russell for psa for players that have like actually owned their own card um i think they have something special where it kind of shows that they've like owned the card before or a okay. dollar they own the car before that's cool. Um, I have heard that. I think Tom. I think I saw something like Tom Brady, or is it Tom Brady? I can't remember now. Yeah, I, I have heard that. That 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 is interesting. That's interesting. Like Steve Aoki, but actually actually a player. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that that's a yeah that's an interesting thing. I, I know stuff that I would probably stay away from is like higher pop count stuff. Like kind of because we mentioned the. Just the whole thing with, let's say, companies kind of coming in and buying up stuff. Because um, how I think of it, Patrick Bed David mentioned this. Uh, he is an entrepreneur who's who's in the cards. He's trying to get people in the cards too. Um, he kind of kind of predicted what was going to happen in the market when, when everything was going crazy. Uh, he. He was saying that like when companies come in, like they bought a Jordan, so there's 318 of them, you know, maybe a company has 25 or 50 and they've just been buying them up every time they come up and they want them to continue to go up um, in price and to maybe they've been buying them up to 200,000, 500,000, 600,000. Um, and then, the yeah, can kind of control the market. So now this, this is why like, People don't understand, like quote unquote comps. Does it? Does it, even if it ends in an auction price, that doesn't mean that's the real value of the card. I think it may take time to, for people to think this because even if you have the same kind of card, if you send it in an auction, it won't sell for the same amount. Um, so, and and then the other thing is like, no matter what card you're buying, eventually it's going to have a peak price, and it won't ever go past that. Um, and I think people have to figure out what that is. Um, but yeah, they control the price and then they start selling them off. Um, now, you know, they're selling them off at 600,000 um, than when they were selling them off, when they were buying them up from like 20,000 to, or 40,000 or 50,000 or $100,000. So then you, you slowly end up getting a large profit. But I guess the only fear with that is like, in case one of those companies leave or multiple companies just decide to get out. Um, I don't think that would happen anytime soon, but, but that wouldn't be pretty for um, a good percentage of cars. I think a lot of cars would still maintain their value and be fine. Um, maybe for strictly collectors, they'd be like, yes, I can buy stuff pennies on the dollar, but like 
yeah, that's like a concern, like long term, I'm kind of a little yeah. worried about. That, that just speaks again to that, like, wh- you know, why I don't like the upper end of the market. I, I feel like there's, there's, that's where anything that's related to shill bidding, to market manipulation, to trying to control the market and, and to try to, to force it to become a certain kind of value. Like it's all in that upper tier of things. And, and that's why I feel like it's, that's just not, I, it feels like a risky space to, to really do anything in, you know, I, I. There's just too much. There's, you know, and the people who are in that space are, are really f- focused on the money aspect of it, like so deeply that, sure. you know, that, and they're so committed to that space, to that, to that, to, to making some money from that, that it just feels like a uncomfortable space <laughs> for so many reasons. I don't like the upper sure. end of the market. Even, even as a collector, like, you know, I, I, if, if I, like I, I said, I mentioned this in another video, like if there was like a sports card hall of fame, you know, like someplace I could go to like a museum kind of thing and look at these, like, you know, these T206 Honus Wagner cards and some of these like million dollar LeBron cards, like I would love to just, you know, I would, I would go there frequently and just stare at those cards for periods of time. But I actually don't feel any need to own a card like that. You know, it's, to me, it's like, yeah, just like you know even if i i don't feel any need to go out and, and, and buy like a ferrari or something it, it doesn't it doesn't appeal 